Hello everybody, and today, now I want to talk about Scala, Bazel, and Virtus Lab. And I heard from the stage that Scala is like an exception, a problem for us, the people working on building engineering. Who has problems with Scala? Who actually Scala is cause of problems for you? Please show your hands. Okay, not so many. Who is the Scala user and likes the language? Few more, good. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'm Krzysztof Romanowski, and I have like two sort of personalities. One is like Scala, one is developer experience, and I need to sort of combine two of those. So on the Scala side, we do like a lot of commercial stuff, but also driving the, the open source, including Scala, the language that compiled itself. And on the, on the uh, developer experience side, is mainly Bazel and IntelliJ plugins. And the shameless plugs. And yeah, let's start the story that I want to share today with 2015, because GitHub is telling me that this is the beginning of the Scala rules. So in 2015, the world was beautiful. We all was young and nice, and uh, people look at Scala with hope. They see it like it's a better Java. The spark was coming on the macros, type safety. It's like next, uh, the, the, this sort of was the vibe, how the rust gets now, so yeah. Uh, a lot of people jump in, and you can see that uh, from the data that GitHub, uh, sorry, that Stack Overflow puts in their uh, surveys. You cannot compare because the methodology changed, but back then Scala was like high up in this kind of like top six, top seven. Now it's sort of mid uh, level. And this one is that on the bottom is Tiobe index, and it's not probably a good way to measure how. Uh, popular the language is, but you can see that starting 2015 there was this kind of spike and the, 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 the thing was growing. And of course there was many bad parts. Uh, there still are, we still face those problems, and the biggest one, especially for us people working on the build, is binary compatibility, because Scala caused like tons of problems with migrations, mainly because like the one version of Scala, let's say 2.10 and 2.11, there was like no compatibility, so, like completely different languages. So you cannot reuse anything, maybe some of the source code. There was macros everywhere. The compilation was like slow. 2011, that was like the main version of Scala for 2015, was probably the slowest in the Scala history, or at least modern history. And also on the, there was this kind of people were like getting a new toy mentality. So they, there was a lot of abstractions. Scala is like really powerful in abstractions and people were like completely overusing that, including macros, which was like hack added to the language and stays and the ecosystem was built on top of that. So all leads to overcomplicated codes and problems further down the road. And the versioning I mentioned was like at 2015 in use there was like four main Scala versions. So you can think there was like four different languages almost, especially from uh, the site of like build tools. And has that improved? Are we better? Not so much, there is still like four versions but around, but there is a big difference. If you notice on the bottom, the, the one with the three doesn't have like, you know, a second row of numbers. Because what I want to do today is I want to convince you that to, that is a good time to actually look at Scala again. Because Scala tree is one of the best, if not the best language out there, that solves a lot of the problems that Scala has forever. And the main thing that was solved was backward compatibility. Scala is now fully, I mean Scala 3 is now fully backward compatible, both on source and binary well. And that's not all. It also have this a notion of LTSs releases. So basically, uh, when you have an open source library and you want to pick your Scala version, you don't want to force users to be like too high. That is why we got this LTSs when people can come in. And those will be maintained for like more than like uh, 2003.3 was like uh, 2022, and it's still like, for sure it will maintain for two more years. And then when, we, when there's like a new LTS version, there will be more than a year of overlap. So, my, and also migrating between versions of the Scala right now is easy. You can pretty much do it like just update the numbers, get some uh, new uh, dependencies and things in your cache, and you are good to go. Mainly because we check on all of, all of the, Every release of Scala is deeply, uh, is trying to compile everything in open source with that version, and each and every problem is investigated by the team. And also, we as a Virtus Lab, the shameless plug number one, uh, offer uh, help for people that want to ev evaluate Scala Tree or like help or uh, has the problems, because we had some other organization in the past, some other projects, 
And having even like, you know, a few days of dedicated time from people that are working with like migrating Scala can make a difference from like not going there to actually be a happy, happy users of Scala tree. And binary compatibility is not the end of the thing because there is a lot of new goodies in the Scala tree. I, I mean, I can, I can die on the seal, but for me, Scala tree is the, the most elegant, the best language that is out there. Uh, mainly because it like, gets all of the kind of good stuff from this, the previous version of Scala and improves on the bad parts. So compati I mentioned compatibility. The compilation is fast. Uh, it's pipeline, so it's like, it can be pipeline, so it's also nice. Uh, the macros are finally sane. It's a pleasure to work with them. There's also like gradual ways you don't need to go all the way to a a a ASTs to actually, you know, to do some simple stuff. In terms of powerful like type systems, like the strongest things of the Scala is it's much better. You can like match on the types in the runtime. There is uh, Scala CLI. If you if you think that Go has a good tooling, so Scala CLI is really compared to like Golang uh, CLI right now because you can pretty much just install a language from 3.5 and have and package your application to a Docker image or deploy it as a native library. It's like a really powerful thing, and. I think it's, it's, it's something I can say objectively that Scala right now is the biggest functional programming language. You might even say that's the only one that succeeds truly in the commercial sense. Depends on what, how you count TypeScript, but yeah, uh, at least a second. And not only that, because Scala is one of the few popular languages that I still this slide, so it's the animation is not my talk, but it's not one of the few, or, or, or probably the only one, a language of the kind of most popular ones that are not owned by any kind of big corporate. Uh, it's, the maintenance is split between four organizations, starting with education is Martin Oderski and his team at APFL. There is non-profit Scala Center, also close to APFL, and there's like two commercials, so it's Virtus Lab and uh, Lightband. Uh, so yeah, there is sort of like, you know, a community on language. And what is with Bazel? Uh, because we are on BaselCon. So, can I say that Bazel and Scala is a big love, oh, technically? Uh, because there's many edges that are missing. Scala rules are there, they are good. And, but from perspective, like the biggest missing piece right now is the uh, Bazel mod. But I know that the, the work is going on there to fix that. Uh, from like sort of Scala perspective, there is few tools that are missing in Bazel world, like Scala fix, you can really combine those with Bazel, so it's like a linting tool. Uh, there's some limitations in testing. Uh, the incremental compilation story is not yet solved. We got some ideas. I hope we can make it work so we can fast uh, development loop, but do not have non-deterministic incremental compilation in your base build. I would really love to have a proper gazelle, like so you can derive the build from the sources. It is hard with Scala because of all the implicitness, and there is few more things. And that's the end of my thing. So I can now introduce us. The Virtus Lab, we are the software service company based in Poland, in Krakow, beautiful city. You really want to come there. And we specialize among many things on the Bazel and Scala. So if you want to uh, talk to us, talk to me. And if you want to, if you have any Scala problems, we are here to help. So thank you. <laughs>